In this video, I'll be going through the ultimate scratch mode, penguin mode. New blocks, new extensions, more blocks, their own project page, dark mode, and many more features to talk about. So without further ado, let's get started. So penguin mod is a mod of turbo up and if you don't know what that means I made a video on that so basically it's a modification of scratch so technically penguin mod is also a modification of scratch I would say a lot of mods in this video so it's really easy to search up penguin mod so you can click the link on the description or you could just simply type penguinmod.site and then it will redirect you to the site so the very first thing I would recommend doing is signing in using your Scratch account. Yes, you heard that right, you could sign in using your Scratch account. And it's really simple, just click on the sign in button. And there are three different ways which you can use to sign in. I like the third option, click on profile command, type your username, click generate code, copy this code, then click on open your profile. And then it will redirect you to your Scratch profile. You just need to come in this code, go back and just click on done. And then it will verify. So once it's done verifying, you should be automatically logged into Penguin Mode. So since I'm already logged in, I could just click on this one click sign in and then it will redirect me to Penguin Mode. So really, really cool. So now let's actually talk about the editor and this editor is really, really powerful. So much powerful than Scratch and even Turbo L. So just click on create and boom, you're on the penguin mod editor. So just looking at it, you can see some key changes like this green flag became a blue flag. We got the pause button and we got a volume slider, which I think is really, really necessary. And of course, no scratch cat, it's just this penguin. So we also got this easy toggle between light mode and dark mode, which scratch doesn't have still. Anyway, you also got every other feature that Turbo Web has because this is a mod of Turbo Web. You got inbuilt scratch add-ons, just like on Turbo Web. So you got the Turbo Web advanced setting as well, where you could enable things like 60 FPS, infinite clones, and remove the fencing limitations, and even make a custom stage price, which is cool. So now to talk about the most powerful things in this scratch mod. So right at the back, you might already notice on the motion section, we got some new blocks. So there are a lot of new blocks which they have added, so I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I'll be going through the ones which I thought was cool and definitely worth showing. So let's start with motion. Just as you notice, we got move back 10 steps. So in original sketch, you just got the move block for some reason, which you could move to your right, but not back. But now you can finally do that. You also can move up. And down, yes, you can do the same thing using the X and Y, but then why would you need the move block? I, I don't understand that logic. So yeah, this is really cool for some fast movements. And we also got some new direction settings, which we could change by clicking here. So we got this setting called look at, where you could change the direction by looking at and switching more than 180 would just flip your sprite, which is cool. And then we got left, right, and up, down, where it would just switch between up and down, which is cool. Then of course, don't rotate. And another new block we got is changing your X and Y. Yes, you can do this using these blocks, but why not a common block? So now you could change both your X and Y at the same time, which is really cool. And we got bounce when we are touching the mouse pointer, which is really, really cool. And next, we got a looks. And again, we got a lot of new blocks which we can use. We could stop speaking finally. So if you say hello, there's no way of stopping this uh, rather than just typing something like this. So now you don't need to do anything like that. You could just stop speaking. So on speech blocks, there's nothing much to customize rather than the input. But with Penguin Mod, you could change a whole lot of stuff. So you could change the font and even the font size, let's say 30. And, boom. and there are so many other things you could change, the borderline width, the minimum width, maximum width, the padding size. You can customize almost anything using these blocks in Poingy Mod, which is really, really cool. You can see this could never be done in Scratch. You could also change the border, which you can do for some reason. Cool. And another really, really useful block, which is not in Scratch for some reason, is the previous costume. On Scratch, there is a block called Next Costume where you could switch to Next Costume. Does something we have a Next Costume? Nope. 
Let's just upload some other costumes. Uh, okay. Using our scratch block, you could just switch to the next costume, but there wasn't a way to switch to the previous costume other than creating a variable, blah, blah, blah. But now with this, you could easily switch to the previous costume, which is neat. We also got stretch where you could stretch stuff. So as I remember, there was a stretch feature in Scratch, but when Scratch 3 came, they just completely got rid of it. But yeah, it's really, really cool. So another useful feature, yes, I'll be saying useful throughout this video, is this effect variables. These are inbuilt, so you don't need to create any of the variables. So those days on Scratch, when you are messing with these effects and you really like it, you need to make a variable to keep track of the right amount or you need to do some mind calculations, which is really annoying, not gonna lie. But for now with this, you could just click on this. So the color effect is 425 and the pixelate effect is 75. Really, really easy. And I hope this feature gets into Scratch because this is really, really useful, awesome, especially when you're working with color effects where you change your color five by five and going through that is really, really painful. Not gonna lie, this is really, really useful. If you're working, you know, with any project that involves layers, you know how annoying it is. But now in Penguin Mod, you just got a inbuilt layer variable and you could just easily switch between layers and layers. So now for the big one, events. And right off the bat, you can see we got a win stop sign click block. So yes, this could be made on scratch with some coding, you know, resetting the timer and all. But having an inbuilt block like this makes it really, really useful. So we also got a block called always, which would, as the name say, always run it. And next is control. So I expect a lot of new blocks here. We got switches, cases. So all of these are kind of programming stuff, which we normally don't see in Scratch at all. And then we got the wire block, which is on Scratch 3.0, but not there. You can use this block on Scratch 3.0, but they, for some reason, removed it. We got the four block really useful and we also got a run script really really cool now you go for sensing so really cool stuff we could check whether inputs are text or not whether it's a number but the coolest thing that i found here is the support for mobile control so it can check whether this project is running on a mobile or not and then you got this finger one down finger one tap and all of these variables which you could use. So this is really, really cool having the native support for mobile controls. Now we got our operators, so you see some new operators and different comparisons. So finally, you can just check whether it's lesser than or equal to. We also got a not equal block from conditions that we'll check for when we are coding. So we'll do this regularly. So I don't know why Scratch doesn't have that native support. Oh yes, we have a block to normally type a text. So I really find it annoying where there isn't a block to, you know, just type text and add it to a condition, which is really annoying. So now you finally have a block which you can just type text and maybe add for a condition and do all sorts of things and some other operators which you could use and of course just the variables so make a new variable and we also got cloud variables which will be stored on the penguin mod site and you will see my block has a block so this will be empty on normal scratch but now you could just return a value normally you return zero or one but you could just return anything or maybe return a variable and do all sorts of that and let's click on make a block and yes, we got a whole new thing. We got run with that screen refresh, whether it returns or returns a value. And we also got customization for this thing as well. So you could change the block color to anything you want, which I think is really, really neat. So you could keep track of the things you do with the block color. Oh, it just changes the block. So not the define block. So define block stays the same, but you could color of this block. So another really important thing that is worth showing is the penguin mod wiki where you could check the documentations of all the new blocks. You just click on new blocks and then sort it by the category. And then it would just show all of the blocks and then you need to click in. And then it would say what that block does, which is really, really important and really, really cool. So if you don't know what any block does, you can just easily go into this wiki and find out what the block actually does. 
So enough talking of all the cool blocks, now let's move on to extension and as I said in the intro, there are a lot of really cool and new extensions. As usual, you just need to click on the extension menu and voila, you'll be having all the cool new extensions. So from here, you could actually sort or even search the extension you want, which is really handy. So there are penguin mode only extensions here. So we got like the stage camera. It will be useful when you're making things like a platformer or an RPG. Really, really cool. And then we got some expansions to some of our categories. So as you can see, we got some motion, events, controls, sensing and operators. And what this does is adding some more functionality on top of all the new blocks. So if we click on controls, we get this whole new other section where you can use different more functionalities like L save, repeat for some seconds. So this totally feels like the ultimate scratch because all of these are some pro features which you would won't use on a normal game. So we also got some other extensions too like sound for starting and controlling all the stuff. You could also, you know, customize the variable which is cool. Wow, so you could actually change all of these variable things which is really, really cool. And there are many other variables. We got tweening, so this is for animation, like smoothing those stuff, canvas effects. So with this extension, you can apply various effects for the whole stage rather than different spice and costumes. We got multiple timers and some really, really cool extensions which you could use. So after this inbuilt extension, there are also some user submitted extensions which you could use. So these are all custom extensions that people made. Since this is a modification of Turbo Web, they also have the default Turbo Web extensions, which are really, really powerful. So you got Box 2D by Griffpatch, which is basically physics, but in Scratch, really, really cool. And we also got this Clone Plus, which I really love. It gives you some really ultimate control of the clones. Really cool. But then that we got these extensions as well, some native Game Pass support, Change the mouse cursor and the turbo up blocks which you get, the last key pressed and this thing. And of course, you also got the default scratch extensions as well and the scratch lab ones too, like this animated text. So we talked about blocks, we talked about extensions and now it's time for the sprite and backdrop library. And unfortunately, no one has ever touched it. It's the default user sketch sprite library. Yeah, no one have ever touched this. Well, talking about sprites, something that they have touched is the image editor. So if you click on this image editor, you might see we got a whole new section here. So you finally can cut something and paste it. And they also got this auto snapping feature, which I think is neat. So, if, so you could toggle on and off from here and you could change the settings from here as well. You also got different things like centering the sprite. Finally, you don't need to drag and mess around things. You could just click on center and boom, really, really easy. So they got a rounded rectangle tool, which means you can finally get curved shapes, perfect curved shapes inside of Penguin Mod, which is really handy. And we also could draw triangles and we all know how big that is because drawing a triangle in scratch is really, really hard. So you could change the amount of sides and make it to different shapes. Now it's a pentagon. Neat. And we also got some weird tools which I had to read the wiki in order to understand why these things exist. The Among Us looking thing is here because they were testing with different shapes and had made this tool. And finally the one who made Penguin Mod really liked it and decided to keep it. Which I think is really funny. And we also got this dragon which I don't know, I don't know if you want a quick dragon hit, there you go. Penguin Mod's got that too. And we also got arrows, which I think is really, really neat. And it's really, really smooth. Look at this. And we are still not done. We got the text tool, which finally had some low fonts. So you got some really cool fonts that you can use. Finally. And of course, you could upload your own fonts using the add more fonts. So the bitmap editor is almost the same. You could add more fonts. But other than that, yeah, it's just the same thing. So every new block and every new extension which is on Penguin Mod can be only used within Penguin Mod. So you can't upload it into Scratch or use it within Scratch because obviously that doesn't have support. And if you try to save to your computer, project will be saved as a .pmp file which is a Penguin Mod project, not your typical Scratch file which is a .sv3 file. So you could only open these projects within Penguin Mod. So keep that in mind. 
So make sure you play around all of these cool new blocks and cool new extensions which you can use and try to come up with some project which is really hard to do in Scratch but just easy because all the cool extensions and quality of life improvements. And at the end, you could just have some fun, make some projects. If you're watching this part of the video, you'll probably enjoy the content so make sure you give it a like and consider subscribing for more future videos like this. Halloween is coming near so make sure to check out this video where I show you how to make the Google Halloween game inside of Scratch. Yes, no mod, just inside of Scratch. See you in the next one.